Hi, welcome back to Catalyst University. Uh, we're going to go over the function of the sodium potassium pump in this video. And we'll try to make it as simple as possible, depending on which context you're watching this video. I will have this in the biochemistry playlist, the exercise phys playlist, anatomy and physiology playlists, and so forth. Uh, but in general, you pretty much just need to know the same kind of stuff for each of those classes. So let's go in some detail. All right, so to just to orient you with this picture, this right here, where my mouse is covering, these are the phospholipids of a plasma membrane. So sodium potassium pumps, which are also referred to as sodium potassium ATPases, exist pretty much ubiquitously in uh, all sorts of cell types, uh, but they're in very high concentrations in cells like neurons and muscle cells because there's a lot of ion transport across those membranes. All right, so to familiarize you with the setup, this lighter blue, or the kind of gray out here, this right here where my mouse is, this is the outside of the cell, okay? Down here on the bottom, where it's very dark, that's the inside of the cell, okay? Now up here on the outside of the cell, there's a lot of ions that are really highly concentrated. The main ones are gonna be sodium and chloride. Now for this, because it's a sodium potassium pump, we're only concerned about the sodiums, which you can kind of see over here. Down here in the inside of the cell, the most highly concentrated ion we're gonna be talking about is potassium, okay, given by K plus right here, all right? Now, the, the general function of the sodium potassium pump is going to be to pump sodium from the inside to the outside of the cell and to pump potassium from the outside to the inside. So both of those transports are against that particular concentration gradient. If we're moving sodium from the inside to the outside where it's already more highly concentrated, that's against the concentration gradient. If we're moving a potassium from the outside to the inside, that's also moving against the concentration gradient. So the other name for the sodium-potassium pump is the sodium-potassium ATPase, meaning this is also an enzyme, and it's going to have to hydrolyze an ATP to give, get energy enough to cause the transport to occur. So both of these movements are against the concentration gradient, and to be very specific, this is going to be a type of primary active transport because it's going to directly utilize the energy from ATP. And another name you might hear this referred to is a P-type ATPase, meaning it directly gets phosphorylated by ATP. All right, so let's let the animation go, and we will kind of see what happens. All right, so at first what we have is we have sodium that comes from the inside of the cell where it is less concentrated, and three sodium ions are gonna to bind to sodium ion pockets in this enzyme, okay? They're gonna bind right in here. Now what you're gonna see in just a minute is ATP, from the inside of the cell is gonna come up here and phosphorylate the enzyme right here. It's gonna be a phosphate transfer right here. And when ATP loses that phosphate, it becomes ADP, but that phosphate's gonna sort of remain on there. Okay, so in general, ATP is gonna phosphorylate this enzyme once the sodium ions are in here. And the key is there's three sodium ions. All right, so you'll see ATP come in here and notice it's going to get hydrolyzed to ADP. And as soon as that phosphorylation occurs, when that phosphate is stuck right on there, there's a change in conformation of the enzyme. So what you hopefully saw before was the, the, the channel part of this was open to the inside of the cell. That's what allowed the three sodiums to bind. But as soon as ATP phosphorylates it, there's that change in conformation and it's gonna open to the other side. And that's gonna allow these three sodium ions to move out, okay? And they're just gonna sort of diffuse out and now they're back where they belong, all right? So now we have that sodium there, but we need to get the potassium ions to the inside of the cell because we have some leftover potassiums out here. We need to get them back. Well, it turns out there's these two little triangular spots right here, these pockets. These are for two potassium ions. So we're going to see two potassium ions kind of come in here. Let's watch. All right, so you'll see that in just a minute. Here are the potassium ions in green. And whenever the potassium ions bind, there's a slight change in conformation which causes this phosphate to then dissociate. It actually gets hydrolyzed off by water. And whenever the potassium binds and the phosphate leaves, there's another change in conformation. And 
Whereas before, when the potassium moved in, you had it open to the outside of the cell. Now when that change in conformation occurs, it's going to re reset itself and open to the inside. So watch. So now it's open to the inside, and you're going to see the potassium move back to where it belongs. Okay? So we'll see that in just a second. So there you go with the potassium. All right? And now we're going to cycle through a few more so you can kind of see it. Sodium comes in, ATP phosphorylates it, change in conformation. Sodium, three of them, move out. And then we're going to see two potassiums are going to come in, bind in their respective pockets. Phosphate dissociation along with change in conformation. And then the potassiums, two of them, are going to go back to the inside of the cell. All right? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's go back and kind of just watch it one more time so we can get a grip on it. All right, so here's our sodium-potassium pump, or ATPase. Three sodiums move in. ATP phosphorylates a specific site on it, change in conformation, and those three sodium ions move outside the cell, all right, against their concentration gradient. There you go. Then we see two potassiums come in, change in conformation along with phosphate hydrolysis. That will dissociate. And another change in conformation that allows the potassiums to move inside the cell, also against the concentration gradient. We'll see those move in. All right. So now, again, notice this potassium pump is back, or the sodium potassium pump is back to its original conformation where it's open to the inside. That's how it's going to start every cycle. Now, one thing I want to make sure we understand before concluding this video is... Um, I wanted to make sure that we understand how it's able to move sodium and potassium against the concentration gradient. How is it able to do that? The way it's able to do that is through ATP hydrolysis. Okay, remember that ATP is a very high energy molecule. And whenever ATP, as we saw, where it transfers, let me go back here, where it transfers that phosphate right here, that releases a large amount of energy that drives these changes in conformation. That's what allows this change in conformation to happen right here, and then you see the sodiums are going to move through. Okay, If it wasn't for that ATP, this process would not occur. Okay, The, sodium would, the, the leftover sodium would stay on the inside, and the leftover potassium would stay on the outside, and you'd never, you would never um, get those ions to move back where they belong at rest. You would never be able to do that. So without the hydrolysis of ATP, this would not occur. So I just want you to understand that that ATP hydrolysis is absolutely critical for essentially getting this, these changes in conformation to occur and allow the ions to move through against their concentration gradient. Remember, this because both movements are against the concentration gradient, this is a type of active transport. An active transport always requires ATP. The A in ATP is for active. Okay, active transport. So hopefully this video made sense. Let's just run through it one more time and we'll kind of see it and then we'll conclude the video and I'll shut up. All right. And one more thing, I just wanted to give credit where credit is due for this video. This was constructed by the McGraw-Hill Company. All right, and you can see that in the corner of this screen. So this is a McGraw-Hill production. I did not make this video. Um, so just wanted to give them credit where credit is due. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.